What's going on, everybody? This is Coach Phil, and welcome to another episode of Deep in the Game. And we have a more unique episode right here. So it's not even just football we're going to be talking about. This is bringing up awareness for an event that's going to be happening. And I happen to be talking with the person that's spearheading this event. We have the lovely Marcia McNaughton and also CFL super fan. I guess you could say BC Lions super fan. Marcia, how you doing? I'm doing very well. Thanks. Sorry for all the internet chaos going on, but I think we got it figured out. Three different locations, two different devices, ladies and gentlemen, and we finally got her. And now we got a bow flex in the background and we here. Got to work on it, you know? Not one bit of muscle right there, but we'll take it. <laughs> I wasn't flexing. Right. <laughs> so you let's start from the beginning with you. Uh, you have been, would you say you've been a lifelong BC Lions fan? That would be pretty fair to say. Uh, I've been a season ticket holder since I was a legal adult myself. So that would be over 20 years. And uh, also going with my parents as a, uh, a young girl. Oh, don't lie. That was last year. He was about 21, 22. Don't worry about it. Yeah, d double that and add some. And yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll start talking. See, I'm trying to subtract some years from you and give you some credit. But nah, you, 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 you <laughs> that's fine with me. Hey, wait. You got to own it, man. Some people don't know when to let it go. Anyway, the devil is a <laughs> lie. Uh, <laughs> so take us through, man. So how did you become a BC Lions fan? Was it your parents or was it just a love for the game or was it just a mixture of both? Uh, a mixture of both, but honestly, my very first experience was my uh, late aunt from Edmonton uh, brought me out to Edmonton when I was, oh, probably eight or nine years old, took me to an Eskimos game and gave me my first ever jersey, which was actually an Eskimos Gizmo Williams. And uh, he got me into the league and then I would never leave my parents alone. Let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> uh, he didn't convert me to Edmonton I did you know end up following BC thankfully but who were some players that you uh fell in love with as a fan a super fan like well back in the day yeah back in the day or and, like and just uh overall oh man well I mean gr growing up you know you're watching Louis Pasaglia Corey Philpot um I, I could pull out some ridiculous names uh, you know doug flutie the flutie brothers uh that you know that was the era that really you know 90s that got got me going wow you've been you've seen a lot you've seen a lot of players come through because louis pasagula played till i was in kindergarten he started in i think it was 74 75 jesus christ i wasn't even born then <laughs> see try to tell you he's, he's a youngin he's a youngin you know nothing about that so <laughs> so you are spearheading the uh, did you want to tell people i'll let you tell people what you have going on right now oh yeah well it, it's not it's not just me uh you know the cfl we call it the cfl fans fight cancer event it's all across canada Every year, the host city puts on an event, and all the awesome uh, fans and organizers get together, raise money for a local cancer charity. So this year, myself and uh, Brian, who was one of the original founders, uh, are kind of spearheading this year. We're super excited. As of yesterday, we had it got the venue booked, the charity confirmed, everything locked and loaded. So now it's time to raise money. And which charity will you guys be fundraising for? It's the uh, Michael Ciccone Foundation. Uh, he was a young man here in the Lower Mainland that was diagnosed with cancer at a very, very young age. And uh, his dream was to to raise funds and so children like him didn't have to uh, fight and go through what he did. Uh, unfortunately, he did pass away quite a few years ago now. Uh, but his family is continuing the legacy uh, now that they're fundraising for uh, immunotherapy and uh, opening it up so children can uh, get the treatment, you know, and as well, when you're starting with childhood, it's going to grow to adulthood. So they're doing a great job and we're going to be really happy to help them out. It's a beautiful thing to be fundraising for. And uh, where um, where will this uh, event be? And tell us, tell us what's going to be happening. 
So it's going to be, uh, as always, the day before Grey Cup. So that's Saturday, November uh, 16th. It's going to be at the Shark Club, downtown Vancouver, right across from the stadium uh, from 1 to 5 after the Spirit of Edmonton breakfast. So everybody will be uh, quite happy, a few uh, sluice juices in them and ready to spend some money, which is a good thing. What is the goal, the target goal you're looking to get? Well, Hamilton and the crew last year uh, absolutely killed any past records. They raised forty over forty thousand dollars. Wow! So our record goal, our goal is to beat that record. Uh, I'm going to aim for fifty, but I mean, really, if we get a hundred bucks more than them, then we have something to pass on to to next year. Wow! You guys are going shooting for the stars right now. I tell you that right now. You also have a, a little get together you're going to be having in February. Yes, uh, February seventeenth. Uh, Adam out in uh, Toronto has kind of spearheaded this. It's a CFL Family Summit. He calls it kind of a kickoff to the fundraising event. And great idea by him. Have every CFL city and fans host an event at the same time. Hopefully, everybody can log online at the same time and kind of do a Zoom or a chat uh, and kick off the, the fundraising for November. That's good. That's good. And I will be attending that, showing out, acting wild and reckless. You know how I get down. Uh, Grey Cup or February 17th? Both. All right. Well, you know you know, your girl's going to get you covered out here. So. Oh, I bet you will. Anyway. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> You guys will be host. Obviously, BC is going to be hosting the Grey Cup this year. Tell us what it's like in the city. I got to experience it a couple times coming down. But for those that haven't really got a chance to experience BC, what will it be? What do you expect and what can they be looking forward to with BC hosting the Grey Cup? You, having the lovely event you're going to be having and uh, trying to sell the Grey Cup. BC selling the Grey Cup for the folks. Yeah, I mean, BC, I'll be honest, has always been a, a fairly tough sell for Grey Cup. Uh it, 2011, of course, was epic with BC winning it here at home. Mm -hmm. that, that was the most I've seen the city get behind uh, the Grey Cup event. Uh, it, it, it's something I really know, and I think especially with the uh, BC Lions' new owner, mm -hmm. he's putting mm -hmm. everything he has into making this a, a fabulous uh, event. And, and really, he doesn't hold back. So I think this year is probably going to change – uh, the BC culture for Grey Cups, I think, is going to be phenomenal. Why do you think it was so? It's so hard to kind of sell BC because being in BC, man, it's from being from Washington. I always feel like it's being in Seattle. It's so much urban stuff. It's 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 the airport is what it is. I can't stand the airport, but <laughs> that's why they lost my luggage last time. I know they probably did hear me talk about them on one of the podcasts I went on, but. Why was it such? Why is it such a hard sell for BC? You would think they'd be able to draw people in and all that stuff. You know, it's it's tough to say, and and not to uh, pick on uh, any BC sports fans, but we we seem to be a little bit of fair weather fans around here. I mean, we lost the Vancouver Grizzlies. Uh, who That's... who would have thought? You know, hey, awesome, we got an NBA team, uh, and then lose them. And so I, I, I think it's kind of a ebb and flow kind of thing around here. Uh, our diehards are diehards. Uh, I think it's about, uh, and the Lions are doing a great job, and the Canucks, Whitecaps and stuff as well, getting butts in the seats by opening things up to younger fans, opening up the market, advertising well. Uh, it's The culture is changing, that's for sure. See, I grew up, uh, I was born in 94, so I can't, I was born right when the Grizzlies happened. And growing up, I just thought, man, that was their New jerseys were cool. I thought this the oh, arena yeah. was cool. You had great, had some, even though the team was not that good, they kind of pulled the plug on that very, very fast and didn't give it a chance like Toronto yeah. got. Cause Toronto, they got to play in the Sky Dome and all that craziness and they got their own. They have Vince Carter, but. Six years was just way too soon to be pulling a plug on like the Grizzlies. And then you guys have the Lions, which has been a staple just as much as the Canucks. I, I just don't. I, I And even being going to the game, the two games I went to for BC Lions, your fan base is rabid. You guys, you guys are funny. You guys are some funny, funny fans. And I didn't get the feeling of fair weather. 
I, I, I maybe because I'm not around it every day or like, you know, I haven't gotten that deep and trenched into it just yet. Why would you think it's fair weather? You guys just want winners or is it just there's more things to do in Vancouver than just go to a football game? I, w- I wish I knew because I don't have that mindset. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I've been Canucks, Lions, you know, my whole life. So to me, it's it's not an issue, you know. But yeah, yeah, there's been tough years, and I got a little grumpy for for a bit. But uh, in the end, it's it's my team. Uh, we should all think, you know, it's our team. Let's all work together. Let's keep this community and, and the CFL family together. That's what it's all about, man. It's building that camaraderie and building that family atmosphere with CFL family. That's one thing I love about them. <laughs> From people far and wide, man, I, I have yet ever seen any type of uh it's always fun love it's always good jabber good back and forth talking mess whatever but you guys you guys got a really good opportunity right here and hopefully with the great cup coming you guys are going to show out it's a great atmosphere being in bc place even though it's one of the older stadiums you feel the nostalgia and you feel i guess you could say that the what what the cfl is all about so this is going to be a great opportunity for you guys and this event is going to be something that will beat Scamilton easily. Y'all can get 50 racks easily. I can tell you right now. <laughs> I, I sure hope so. It's uh, We've got a lot of people on board, which is great. I've already chatted with uh, my buddy, Neil McAvoy, assistant GM of the Lions. They're on board. Uh, I've already kind of put a little uh, word in with my Canucks friends and stuff like that. So um, I think even just as a community, not even just football, uh, it, it's just about raising money, you know, doing the right thing, and we can get everybody involved. That's what it's all about right there. Um, is there any way anybody, if they're not going to be at the uh, event, or just if they want to donate in general, is there a place they can go to donate? Yes, uh, and it will be set up within the next probably 10 days. Um, the family charity we're working with, the Michael Ciccone Group, they actually have a platform for donations. Mm-hmm. They just need to set up uh, a CFL fights cancer one so they they can track where all the money comes from. Everybody can get tax receipts where it goes to. I will have that available very shortly, and I can update you about that. All right, and I will definitely put that for you all in the description box below and i will definitely keep everybody updated on what the when the event's happening and other happenings along with the event but again thank you marcia for hopping on and coming on an episode of deep in the game i really appreciate you uh thank the world of you and uh look forward to seeing you in a few weeks hey absolutely so glad you could uh help with this love seeing you and we'll be even better to uh crush a couple cold ones uh february 17th Oh, you know, I'm ready to get sloshed and tore up and all that. Go Lions. <laughs> <laughs> Till next time, everybody, man. Hey, there's another episode of Deep in the Game. We might be deep in this game, but you got the rules missing. Y'all take care. The man's in the house. So crazy. The man's in the house. I'm going to tell you the truth. The man's in the house. So crazy. The man's in the house.